Well, happy Tuesday. Welcome to our daily time of prayer and reflection. My name is Rich Schmidt, one of the pastors here at Living Hope, and I'm glad to be with you today. Uh, let's begin with this prayer from the Book of Common Prayer. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray that you would so guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today we continue the story of Jesus in John chapter 12, starting in verse 20. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip in turn told Jesus. Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. Now, our devotional book uh, today does a great job with this passage, but one thing it doesn't address is the part of this that strikes me as the most odd and off-putting, uh, the whole love your life, hate your life thing. Because uh, for us today, it sounds like Jesus is saying that if you enjoy the life God's given you, that's a bad thing. That maybe what he wants is for us to be moping around saying, man, my life stinks, I hate it. No, that's not what Jesus is talking about here. In Jesus' day, talking about love and hate like this was a way to talk about choice or commitment. Uh, do you remember what Jesus said about serving two masters? Uh, we find it in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. He says, No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Uh, or the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 9, verse 13, he's quoting the prophet Malachi, speaking for God, as it is written, I loved Jacob, but I hated Esau. Now, Jesus and Paul aren't talking about emotions here, like, you know, oh, I really like this boss, but I don't like that boss. You know, I love her, I hate her. You know, God didn't have hateful feelings toward Esau. This is an, an idiom, it's an expression that says, I've made a choice. I'm working with this one, not with that one. God chooses to form the nation of Israel uh, from Jacob and his descendants and not from Esau and his descendants. When you're working two jobs and both bosses schedule you for the same night, you have to disappoint one of them, right? You're going to choose one over the other. Or in those days, they would have said, you're going to love one and hate the other. So here Jesus is saying that we have a choice to make. Let me read it again. Anyone who loves their life will lose it while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Every day, we face choices. Am I going to keep this money for me, or am I going to give it to this person in need? Am I going to spend this time re-watching that show on Netflix, or am I going to spend this time serving my neighbors? You know, ultimately, when my two bosses disagree about something, when my comfort, my ego, my flesh wants me to do one thing, and my Lord and Savior wants me to do something else, who wins? <laughs> Who do I choose? Jesus says that a life centered on me is a life that is ultimately lost, ultimately wasted. But a life centered on him, a life that's willing to let go of itself, to see that it's not all about me and mine, that is a life that lasts, that has an eternal impact. Remember what he said right around this? The time has come for him to be glorified, he said, which is how he talks about his being lifted up on the cross to die. He says he's going to die and be planted in the ground like a kernel of wheat, which is the only way to get from just one little seed to a great harvest of many seeds. And he said that whoever serves him must follow him. So this is true for us as well. If I hold tightly to my one seed, my one life, and protect it from any chance of suffering, it'll always only be that one seed. But if I'm willing to let go, Trust Jesus, follow him in a life of self-giving, self-sacrificing love. Then there's the chance that my life might have a massive positive impact. Now, fortunately, we know that on the other side of our temporary sacrifices is God's eternal joy. We know that on the other side of Good Friday and Jesus' sacrificial death is Easter Sunday and resurrection life. 
So let's be willing to follow Jesus, to choose him, to love him above all others. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the self-giving, self-sacrificing love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today, would you help us to experience your love for us so deeply that we are changed, we're transformed, we're empowered by your Holy Spirit to live lives of love, lives that look like Jesus. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, Grant that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Commend to your mercy all who have died and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace, for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but with our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Now let's pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Uh, before we go, two quick reminders. Uh, I'll be on Zoom today from 3.30 to 4 if you want to meet face-to-face. For a bit, just go to livinghope.info slash Zoom, and it should open up the app, take you right into the meeting. And, uh, and the other thing is that this Sunday is Easter Sunday, and we're going to have both services running again, 9 o'clock and 10.30. If you're local here and would like to join us in person, uh, masks on, keeping our distance still. Uh, and there will be an Easter egg hunt for the kids, elementary age and younger, uh, in the side yard over here in between the services uh, at 10.10, 10 minutes after 10 o'clock. So now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.